Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I'm here with a review for Black Seconds by Karen Fossil. This is a Norwegian thriller about a nine-year-old girl named Ida who goes missing. It covers the perspectives of the policeman, her mother, as well as other people in the community who deal with her disappearance in very different ways. I'm just going to jump right into it and say this was the worst book I've read so far this year. I gave it one star, and there are two reasons I'll give a book one star. The first is if there's a lack of anything good. And that happens when a book isn't necessarily like the worst thing ever, but I get nothing out of it, so I feel like it deserves one star, which was the case with All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. I could see why other people might like it, but for me, I got nothing out of it, so it was a one star read. The other reason is because it's so full of just everything terrible. And that, that was the case with this book. It was just awful in every single way, at least for me. But it has high ratings on Goodreads. It has very high ratings, which kind of confused me because I saw nothing positive in this book whatsoever. It was just all incredibly miserable. I have never, ever forgotten that I had read a book while I was still reading it. I was literally looking for a book on my shelf to read, and then this fell out of my blankets, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be reading that. I'm a hundred pages into it and had completely forgotten. It's never happened before. I don't understand what it was about this book. Literally nothing in it made sense to me. Or not that it didn't make sense. It didn't feel cohesive in my brain. It didn't feel like a story that worked together. I don't really know how to explain it, but every time I picked it up, it was like there was a disconnect between me and the plot, and the plot and the characters, and the characters and reality. The entire thing felt very stilted. Not just the writing itself, but the characters felt stilted. The story felt stilted. The narration and the progression of the storytelling felt stilted. Like, there was nothing about this book that worked for me. Every time I picked it up, I'd completely forgotten everything that I'd read before, and I'd have to flip back a few pages and try to refresh my memory. I would forget the characters' names 200 pages into this book. Major characters' names. They'd say, oh, um... They'd say, Ruth went down to the station to talk to the police. And I'd be like, who is Ruth? Who is this Ruth person? Please explain. And it would take me about a page and a half of context to remember who Ruth was. Even though she was a very major character in the story, she had her own point of view at many different points. I just, it wouldn't stick in my brain. Nothing about this book stuck in my brain. The writing style in this felt incredibly awkward and stilted to me, but I don't know how much of that is actually Karen Fossum's writing itself, or if it's the translation because this book was originally written in Norwegian. And I always feel kind of bad critiquing books in that regard because I don't know if it was Karen Fossum. Maybe this is just a bad translated edition, or maybe something got lost in translation and the Norwegian writing style is really beautiful. Like, I just, I genuinely don't know when it comes to that. And I don't always feel that way with translated books. There are a number of translated books that I think are beautifully written, that the writing flows really lovely, and this just wasn't one of them. This didn't work. A lot of the writing felt very short and very stilted. Like, there was a lot of very simple ideas that were over-illustrated within the writing in almost a childlike kind of way. For example, I wrote down in my notes, which I don't actually remember from the book, so this just came from my notes, but one example was the newspaper was on the shelf. He picked up the newspaper. He read the newspaper. He thought about what he read. And it was all just very, very simple ideas. And I don't know if that's something that works better in Norwegian, because it might be something that's indicative of Norwegian writing, or it might be Karen Fossum's writing style, and it might just work in a different language that it doesn't in English, or it might be that I just really don't like that. But I, I didn't get anything out of it for that. It was so awkward and uncomfortable to read. And along those lines, the dialogue felt so awkward and not real. Like, I kept thinking while I was reading it, no one talks like this. No one talks anything remotely like this. And again, I don't know if it's a Norwegian thing. It might be. But it was so uncomfortable to read. And I'm not someone who normally notices that in dialogue. I'm pretty forgiving when it comes to dialogue because I tend to talk kind of funny. 
and I tend to use weird words that people don't usually throw around in regular conversation, but it was so apparent in this book. Like, it was just in your face how fake the dialogue sounded to me. Like, just no one talked like that. And I feel like if I noticed that, it was especially bad. The characters also didn't work for me. They didn't feel real. They felt about as fake as the dialogue did. They felt like puppets. They weren't real people. Like, no one is that good at directly ex expressing their thoughts and feelings. Like, I don't like the miscommunication trope, but no one can express complex thoughts and feelings that easily and directly and in such a useful way. Like, that's just not something that happens, and especially it's not something that every character in the story can do. And they were just too melodramatic as well. At the beginning of the story, Ida has gone missing, and she goes out on a bike ride and doesn't come back. And her mother is just sitting there worrying about where she is. And her mother's like, I knew this was going to happen. I knew since the day she was born, she was going to disappear because she was too good for me. And I was just waiting for this to happen for 10 years. And it was like, what? Like, who thinks like that? Whose daughter has been missing for 10 minutes? Or isn't even missing? Whose daughter returns 10 minutes late from a bike ride? And the mother's like, already decided that her daughter is dead and that this was bound to happen. And she'd been waiting for it for 10 years. Like, that's not normal. And... That happened with pretty much every character in this book. There was something like that that just wasn't normal and that didn't make sense. And it was so frustrating to read. And they didn't feel like people. I never once connected with them in any significant way. And I think that played into me forgetting who they were. Because they just all felt so fake so that they all ran together and I just forgot all their names completely. Like, who was Ruth 220 pages into the book when Ruth was a major character? I'm not... <laughs> I'm not good at remembering names, but I'm not usually that bad. And honestly, my biggest issue with this book was how predictable it was. So, so painfully predictable. And normally, I kind of keep my mouth shut on thrillers when I find them super predictable. I might call them generic, I might call them pretty average or par for the course or mediocre, but I only call them predictable when they're really truly predictable. And even then, I leave the caveat that I am uncommonly good at guessing twist endings. It's just the way my brain works. I read a lot of thrillers, so I'm very good at that. It's not arrogance, it's just a fact. It is the rare thriller that can actually surprise me. But I called the ending on page six of this book. Literally page six, I went back and checked. I thought, dear God, I hope that's not the ending. And then on page 24, I was like, dear God, that is the ending, and here's the twist that goes along with it. And throughout this book, I kept thinking, you know, sometimes the ending is very predictable, but there's something else to go along with it. There's some sort of twist, there's some sort of underlying issue that makes it more dramatic, even if you know what it's going to be. Because a lot of thrillers do that, where, like, you can kind of guess the big idea, but then there's something else that, like, sort of, it is that, but it changes it a little and makes it more than just that. This book didn't have that. This book was just exactly what I thought it was going to be. From the very beginning, it was so painfully obvious, and there was nothing else in this book that gave it any sort of depth. It was just depressing and boring and so painfully predictable, and I just hated every second I was reading this book. It took me about a day to read, not because I enjoyed it, but because I was thinking, oh god, I don't want to spend the next week reading this thing. I want it to be over as soon as possible. And I really like literary thrillers, because a number of people on Goodreads and the reviews, because I read the reviews because I was very confused why so many of them were four and five stars, and people were like, this is my favorite book of all time, and I was like, why? Like, literally, why? I'm not, like, mad about it. I'm just confused. And I'm still confused after reading the reviews. But a number of them implied this was, like, a literary thriller, which I understand. And I do actually enjoy literary thrillers that have, like, deeper meanings. And they're not about the plot twist. They're not necessarily about, like, the thrills. They're about, like, deeper subject matters. But this didn't have anything. This was utterly generic and painful and boring and I hated every second that I was reading this and it's only March but like possibly this could be the worst book I read all year. I wouldn't be surprised. This is probably the worst book I've read in like the past five years. This was awful. That's untrue. The Pleasures of Men was worse but not by a whole lot. But this was just awful. Like I don't know where I picked up this book and I regret it so much. Like I rarely regret reading books but dear god this was painful. 
this was an awful experience. And I'm just like, please, everybody, read this book so you can tell me what you get out of it. <laughs> because I read a bunch of reviews on Goodreads. I read, like, an entire page of positive reviews on Goodreads because they're, like, all positive. And I don't know why, and I still don't know why. And I read them, and I'm like, why? But I don't know why. People apparently like this book, but I thought it was awful. I gave it one star. I got nothing out of it. So if you have read this, if you like this, please let me know. I'm very curious and confused and please tell me why you like this book. That's literally all I want to know because it was just a bad experience all around. And it's been about a week and a half since I read this and it still makes me irritated to think about but I can't actually remember a lot of the specifics because I couldn't remember them while I was still reading it. So there's that. This has been a rant review. I don't know how useful this is. Usually I like to have my reviews be like, somewhat useful in case you're interested in reading the book, but this I just needed to rage at, I think. Let me know if you have read this. Let me know if you like this especially because I would love to hear why more than anything else. And if you've read it and hated it, please let me know that as well because I'd like to know I'm not alone. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all again soon.